Saturday the 20th of March already how did that happen and we've got a brew day going I've replaced the SSR in here I'll put a new element in here because I wasn't happy with it um, and when I took the cover off the bottom and had a look I'm glad that I replaced it it was looking fairly dangerous um, lots wires too close together probably not dangerous but then not comfortable for me uh, just adding water treatments to the reverse osmosis um, that's a five stage reverse osmosis I'm going to be doing another video about why I think using reverse osmosis water is a good thing trademark so in 48 litres of water, I've added calcium sulphate, uh, 6 grams, table salt, 0.3 grams, magnesium sulphate, 0.2 grams, calcium chloride, 11 grams, and uh, NaHCO3, magnesium, 0.3 grams. Into the mash, the mash is actually all weighed out ready there ignore that i haven't got any bohemian pilsner to go in actually i have but i haven't ba um, binned it up yet because it's still in bag uh, so the malt bill is 4.4 kilograms of golden promise yes i had some golden promise returned not the five grams that i lent uh five kilos that i lent out 4.4 kilos oh well 1.2 k of oats 5.3 carapils, 450 grams of wheat and 300 grams of oat husks. I'm going to throw that through at 66, 67 for 60 minutes. And uh, then we're going to have a very, very slow vol off and slow sparge using the Valentine and underback. So getting ready, I'm going to transfer that water into boil kettle. Better move the... That's sodium percarbonate. Finish doing the water additions and then transfer the water ready to mash in. Yes, well. That's a bit of a shitter. One of the benefits, I think, of having that insulated mash tun is going to be more evenly distributed temperatures throughout the mash. Sixty-six to sixty-seven, I'm okay with. Over that is a bit of a worry. Yeah, so that's okay, but I mean, there are hot spots in here. So that then obviously requires a lot more stirring. That'll do me. Uh, it is a bit all over the place still though. Um, if I get and stand up on me, stand up on me, on me thing, on me, make me taller thing. If we have a little look in there, it's um, stupidly hot at the back. <sighs> Almost cock on. Stupidly hot. The trick is to get in there a bit further. The deeper you go, the uh, yeah, so very, very fluctuant. Uh, I might get a slightly better temperature probe. Um, that one's all right. 
but it means I've got to get my arm in there. Be better to have something I can read out here. I'll drop in a probe in. This isn't really as moist as I usually like it. I usually like it like it a little bit more, a bit more dripping than this, but it's okay. The conversion actually takes place within the first 15 minutes and then the rest of it is pulling out all of those little extra, all those extra little bits. Um, I've put 7mm of AMS in there um, and it was about 16 litre. I plonked in which is slightly higher than normal but it was quite a large voluminous rather than anything else grain bill see now that's dropped to 65.2 as soon as that drops below 65 the Herms pump comes on and starts zipping it all through there and back to bring it up but I think I'm gonna do probably a slightly longer mash very very long sparge just to try and pull everything out of there this one i'm actually aiming for about a five percent a 5.5 percent abv tomorrow i'm tempted to do another brew i've got a couple of table recipe uh, table beer recipes that someone sent me so i may very well have two brew days back to back um I've only got the two Firmzilla all-rounders, but they're going to be, I'm hoping, because this is going to have the Kavake yeast, I'm hoping that the uh, the Firmzilla, I'll have a free Firmzilla at the end of next week. So this will just go into a bucket. Tomorrow's will go into a bucket. This won't. This is going into a Firmzilla. Tomorrow's will go into a bucket, and then I'll dry hop it into a Firmzilla. Um, again, to avoid as much potential oxygenation as possible. And that still hasn't dropped sufficiently below 65. I don't really mind. Oh, here we go. No? All right. Um, I don't really mind because I said the temperature in there is up and down like a fiddler's elbow. Um, pH 5.2. Here we go. So that just oh, just kicked in briefly. <laughs> not not long enough to have a significant effect. <laughs> I really do need to sort these PIDs out. Uh, doing my tits in. Right. Um, back when we're ready for us sparging. Waiting for the mash. I thought I'd hike the nails out of them. And look at this. We have blossom on our blossom tree. Isn't that lovely? I'm choosing to believe that is the start of spring. <laughs> I've also got a drill tap, which is a drill bit with a tap after the drill. I'll have to show you later. So I might start getting some of these posts up this weekend. Some of them I'm gonna give a quick sand and uh, I might get some, might get some cuprinol. But anyway, for now, Let's get back to our mash. It is that time where we now have to determine whether we've got a decent conversion. And the bulb on my little dripper has gone hard. That's a little plaster where I just almost cut my hand off. But, 
Oh, look. It's a little bit dark. Yep, that's a little bit dark. So give it another 15 minutes. I'm doing a quick vol off just to uh, make sure the grain bed is nicely sort of as it should be filtering it doesn't seem to be a huge amount of solid particulated matter going through lovely color nice one Judd nice one um, we've got a reasonably good conversion as well which I should have just filmed, but didn't. Sorry about that. Um, could do it again. Not going to. See? How radical am I? Ho, ho, ho. All right. I'm happy with that as, um, as a volev. I'm now going to start a very, very slow sparge. We're ready to start the sparge. Now, I'll just talk you through what has changed here. Instead of this coming out of here, into there, out of there, into here, it's not coming out of here anymore. That's turned off. This is turned off. The water will come from the HLT, the liquor, sorry, it will come from the HLT. I don't want to get these things wrong. And will then flash out this here. But going to restrict the flow a little bit this is a bit I know people like to see the bit where it all clears and flushes out and as the water level rises it comes out through the valentine so that now there is now flushed nicely I'm going to turn the pump off and put me sparge ball. Where's my sparge ball? Ho hum, hang on. Here we go. We can turn the pump back on. Have a nice restricted flow. HLT can turn off now. I'm sparging at 78 degrees, and even that's still a little fast. There, yeah, lovely. And dripping out a nice, sweet dripping. <laughs> One day just one day and that's about as fast as we want it and as those who follow this nonsense will remember just got to make sure that's not going to foul on the duck bill no we should be all right with that so now when that gets up to the top it kicks in the latching relay and goes up into the copper now that's going a little bit too fast for me so I'm just going to restrict actually no it's probably as it's just as gravity is taking over and it's finding its way good right well we have a nice slow sparge going oh any second now any second now that will kick in and it will engage the latching relay and then this all comes back up through here into the copper it doesn't go into the copper here because as the copper rises it would then you know the the thing about 
water finding its own level, liquids finding their own level, it will just decant itself all back into the underback. Odd a grant if you're watching this in America. So we're now almost, oh, it's like watching paint dry. Come on, get on with it. Thank you. So that now empties that, I don't know how much is in there, five litres, six litres. Into kettle. This is going to take quite a while. I want a nice, slow, probably 30, 45 minutes barge. Gentle is the key. Nice and gentle. And as that bottom duck bill turns off, it cuts the power to the relay, relay resets, and waits for this then to, even though that comes up, it's creating a circuit, but there's nothing to go through that circuit. If you've watched the other video that I did on constructing the underback, or you watch Chris's, Harry Bruce 69, sorry. Nice, right. Not an awful lot left to do. That's come out quite quickly. It's not a lot going in quickly. Not a lot left to do now until we're ready for uh, starting the boil. See how that sparge is going. Oh. It's actually got, got a fair bit gold. Oh. I think we might need to just. I just halted this back a little bit. Good. Right. Oh, it's still, still got a nice little dribble, a nice sweet little dribble. God, that's cold. I think I'm going to shut the, shut the door. Shut that door. Nobody will know the origin of that phrase. Well, a few might, but I can't imagine anyone under, under 40 knowing it. Today, we're trying something new. Courtesy of Jack, we have a immersion cooler. So rather than my uh, almost patented, but not patented, if that makes sense. Patented, not patented? I don't know. Um, bag of ice in there. Today, we're gonna to use a proper immersion chiller. And um, because this is going into the fermenter at about 30, maybe a little bit more, 35, I'm not gonna use the plate chiller because the plate chiller takes it down too far. So I'm going to do the hop stand in here at 80 for 30 minutes and then I'm going to use the chip, I'm going to drop, drop it to 80 with that there, there, camera, follow my finger, thank you, back over this way, thank you. Uh, and then uh, hop stand at 80 for about 30 minutes, then use that again, well done, you followed my finger, look at it, hey! and drop that down to probably about 35-ish. Um, and then into the fermenter at 35. The fermenter is rated to go to 50 degrees. So we should be right at 30, 35. Uh, then pitch the yeast, get it in the fermentation fridge upstairs, which has got the largest heater. And that cavake then should, we hope, <laughs> Do this in a couple of days at about 30, 35 degrees. So um come on, you're a bit slow in there. There's me, I'm trying to try to keep everybody up to speed and 
he's still dribbling through yeah, still dribbling through slowly. Well, I wanted a slow sparge. Looks like we're getting a really slow sparge. Come on, you must be very, very near. Very near? How near? Look, people have got lives to get on with, you know. They just want to see you kick in. Any second now? Maybe not. <laughs> you little thing of shit. Uh, right, so anyway, we've got a nice gentle sparge going. With virtually no. Oh, that's it. Virtually no. There we are. That should help jolly that along a little bit um, so where are we up to at the moment 30 minutes sorry 25 minutes hey You've seen that before, so we won't do that. We'll come back when we're ready to boil, as I said before. What a glorious day this has turned out to be. And we have got a nice little rolling boil. Topped up the HLT, bringing that up to temperature. And um, I'll have some clean down water then. Wash everything down. Um, afterwards, clean the copper out maybe get a brew in tomorrow don't know tempted to do another flower child as uh, if anyone's seen the rather abysmal failure the last one turned out to be because of my own fault simply because I didn't check the yeast before I pitched it um, that is not something that I will be repeating I've got uh, half a kilo of USO5, well the um, WHC equivalent of USO5 upstairs. Dried yeast, I shall be opening that and using fresh dried yeast, fresh dried yeast, you know what I mean. Um, this one is the Horningdal Kveik and I've got a few other yeasts which I think I'm going to try and use up quite quickly. But for now, what a lovely little rolling boil we've got. We've got another 45 odd minutes. Probably slightly less. No, about 40 minutes now before I need to add the maltodextrin and a quarter of a, a, quarter of a proto flock. And I know people say it's New England IPA, what are you doing it for? I'm doing that to get some of those proteins under control, managed proteins. Not an awful lot more. I have bloody flickery light things happening again. I have to find a way around that. Might have to start using a proper camera. Um, so, yeah, all looking good so far. Uh, I've got some kegs to put back together. Now they're all cleaned out. <laughs> yeah, just six. Um, ready for the next couple of weeks and then hopefully my bits that I've ordered will arrive so that we can at last get to play with the new freshly welded freshly ready 100 litre kit it won't be, it'll be sort of like 80 or 60 litres. As long as I can get two or three cornies out, I don't really mind. Um, four would be nice, but I'll settle for I'll settle for three. I'll actually settle for two. I could do two on this kit, but it's really pushing the pushing the margins up here. I've not got an awful lot of wiggle room. I'd need to have a very careful boil. Um, 
and then the, the obviously the the factor which is a bit of the drawback is the size of the mash tun and the size of the HLT so I could I could do smaller batches on here right back soon still a lovely day and oh pop this in just after the Malto Dex Terrain we're nearly there two minutes to go it's bloody oh we've got a fucky flickery light again fuck off flickery light right um we're almost bang on the measure we've got 80 of citra 50 mosaic ready to go in when this is down to 80 degrees i'm gonna shut this now because it's starting to get a little bit um a little bit what's the name um chili that's the one oh can't wait can't wait to get these babies up and running i tell you um i've got a big filter ready there for it this is the little filter jobs are good and oh minute left now um again this is actually exactly the same way that i would have it connected to the plate chiller um cold water goes in mixes with hot and well it doesn't mix with hot you know it it receives heat from the hot so the heat from the hot and then throws it out there now really i should stick a um thermometer on see what heatness it comes out as but i can't be bothered so whoa. right we're there there oh we're there boys and girls so now we need this to come down to 80 how way we do that is we just allow and that is already coming out wham hot i should say let's see how quickly that takes to go down oh actually i'm surprised that it's going that quickly I'm very surprised it's going that quickly. I can get using the um, plate chiller in less than 10 minutes. I'll take it from 90 down to 15. This looks to be pretty effective. Oh, cheers, Jack. You're a star. Um, yeah. Look at that. Look how quickly, oops, sorry. Focus, you daft sod. Look how quickly that's going down. That's stunning. I have crumbs. Do you know, I think this is better than my big block of ice in the bag. <laughs> Of course it's better than my big block of ice in the bag. The, um, the question is, will it be as effective in the summer when it's right wham outside? But look at that. I was thinking, you know, I think I'll end up saying, oh, back when it's down to 80, but no, crumbs. Right, so let's just um, turn that off because I suspect this will drop a little bit more. That's not bad, is it? Undershot a little bit. 79 point. That was quick. That was kin quick. Now I am not going to put a filter in here. I'm not gonna put um, you know, a hop spider. Oh, zoom out, Martin. Let the boys and girls see the rabbit. All, right. All I'm gonna do 
I'm going to stir these in and then I'm going to let them settle. Oh, that smell. And I've got a clean spoon. Clean spoon and, uh, oh, hang on, where's me? I don't need star sand. What are you doing? Wake up, you dappy git. Right, so this is a DIY whirlpool, boys and girls. Wow. And that's held at 78, which is pretty good. That's pretty good. So we're going to give that half an hour hop stands now. And then I think we're going to go straight into here. I'm about to star sand this. Um, and make some new star sand. Because I realised the other one's just starting to look a little bit cloudy. So I've got shitloads of it. Um, so it's just as well uh, making a new batch up. Word to the wise. If you're going to make your star sand up in something like this, put the water in first, otherwise you're going to have a nice um, damaged, well not damaged, but it will take the uh, transparency away and make it opaque. I can't remember, I don't know, my brain's gone today anyway. Um, so the time we have, oh, this is where my watch is, look, it's just decided to tell me I've reached me daily steps target and not tell me the time right so um, 10 to 4 we're gonna be 20 past 4 before we end up going in there I think I might give it another little stir just to extract all of those beautiful and then I'm gonna use the um, immersion chiller again believe how quickly that took that down. Jack, if you watch this, cool, another few drinks I owe you there, mate. <laughs> what, what a, why have I never had one of those before? I mean, the plate chiller's brilliant, but I mean, that was, that was impressive. That was really impressive. Now, um, right, I'm going to clean that out and then I'll be back in a bit. Now I realise for some people, you don't have an hour to sit down and watch a video of an idiot brewing beer. So I'm splitting this particular video into two parts. This is part one. I strongly urge you to tune in for part two. If you like this rubbish, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you click the little like thing underneath, uh, it tells YouTube that it's okay to recommend my rubbish to other people, poor, unsuspecting people. Thanks for watching. The next part is like really seriously epic. Cheers guys, whatever you're doing, do it safely and uh, cheers.